Ten years ago, I was a freshman pre-med at UCLA. I had no idea what I was doing. And learn by doing, learn by doing. Today, I'm a doctor and anesthesiology resident in New York City, and I've helped thousands of pre-meds get into their dream med schools. I'm going to share 10 uncensored pre-med truths, one for each of the last 10 years. This is exactly what I wish I knew when I was starting out. Brutally honest truth number one, this isn't a Disney movie. There is no one coming to save you. If you don't build a competitive application, your guidance counselor, your PI, your great grades, none of those things are going to get you into medical school. And truthfully, you will always feel mildly inadequate, a little bit dissatisfied. That's the default human setting. There is nothing wrong with you. But don't forget the stakes. You run the risk of being that pre-med who applies to medical school three times, gets in nowhere, and now just has a biology degree with few other options. Only you can be the hero of your own story, and it's time you started acting like it. And the best way to make sure that you're competitive is to read real successful applications. In the description, I've linked eight full AMCAS applications from pre-meds who got into the best medical schools in the country. Click the link in the description box to join 11,400 other pre-meds who have found the application database helpful. Brutally honest truth number two, the best version of yourself is annoying. Part of the price of impact and finding yourself is that there will always be people who think you're a tryhard or you're corny. And honestly, fuck other people that bring you down. That says more about them than it does you. And you're not doing it for them. You're doing it for the sideline of friends and family who are so happy they are literally crying. You can't be the best version of yourself without being a complete fucking joke to other people. Brutally honest truth number three, extraordinary. Extraordinary results come from doing the ordinary things extra times. It's ordinary to do the Gen Chem practice test. Spend extra time and understand every step. It's ordinary to clock into your lab meeting, don't pay attention, and clock out. Do the extra and see what the presenters do well so that when it's your turn to present, you'll have learned from them. To be extraordinary, do the ordinary extra times. And how would you know that if you were a pre-med just starting out? You wouldn't. But it's these lessons that separate pre-meds who get into medical school from those who do not. And if you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, you do not want to make the wrong decisions. Our pre-med Catalyst students that submit their applications on time have a 92% acceptance rate. That's more than double the national average. Our results are because we work so closely with the four students we take on per month. If you'd be interested in working together, click the application cycle advising link down below now to book a free strategy call before we can't take on any more students. Brutally honest truth number four, rack up the failures. Confidence doesn't come from success. It comes from failing a ton of times and then succeeding. It comes from the one single response after you've sent 80 shadowing emails. Optimize for failure because that is the clearest sign you're getting closer to success. Brutally honest truth number five, you don't have an open tab. Medicine doesn't define your self-worth. You are more than your GPA. If you get rejected, that doesn't mean you're a bad person. In fairness, medical school admissions is a silly game with silly prizes. You don't owe anyone anything. Become the best version of yourself if you want to. And if you don't want to, that's okay too. So many pre-meds, including myself, feel this pressure to prove themselves right or prove themselves wrong. But that's all made up. You don't owe anyone anything. If you feel lost and confused, that's what the journey is like. And in truth, it doesn't have to be that way. If you think having someone by your side the entire process might help, it would be an honor to support you. We only take four students per month. Click the application cycle advising link down below before we're full. Brutally honest truth number six, there's only one way to feel better about yourself. My pre-med journey was miserable, and maybe you can relate. At a tough public school like UCLA, I'd start my days at 5 a.m. I'd head to lab to run experiments with our mice, and at 8 a.m. I'd have a full day of classes. I'd eat in between running from commitment to commitment, and at 6 p.m. I started my molecular biology review session. 50 pre-meds filled up our tiny little room, and together we practiced for hours. Then my shift as a referee for intramural basketball started and went from 8 to 11 p.m. By the time I got home, I was completely exhausted, but I slept with all these happy thoughts of the students I helped, the fun I had, and the commitments I stayed true to. It was during these terribly busy days that I learned that the only way to feel better about yourself is to do things that are worth feeling good about. 
You must earn your respect because no one will hand it to you. Really honest truth number seven, everyone has problems. One pre-med has to choose between his singular Caribbean acceptance and deciding to apply to medical school for the fourth time. Another pre-med, one of our students, Vanessa, has to choose between staying home and going to UCSF or moving to Southern California and attending Kaiser with a full ride scholarship. One pre-med's problems are far more desirable. Brutally honest truth number eight, binary, one or zero. As a freshman, you would have said yes to any clinical experience. Now, as a junior who's about to apply with an application revolving entirely around people with physical disabilities, you can't believe that you're in a position to say no to that competitive CRISPR-Cas9 molecular biology lab. The most helpful decision tool I learned from Derek Sivers, and it's to put these opportunities into one of two buckets. The opportunity is either hell yeah, or it's automatically no. Your time is limited and how competitive you are depends largely on the decisions you make. The hell yeah opportunities means that you're more likely to spend time, build skills, and generate meaningful impact. And anything in that gray middle zone is dangerous. It takes your time, makes you feel productive, and doesn't get you closer to becoming a doctor. Brutally honest truth number nine, the sexy, exciting signal. Clinical research is the greatest invention ever. I was going to get both clinical experience and publish more papers. It was two birds with one stone. Then I joined a clinical research lab looking at normal pressure hydrocephalus. And my job was to click through hundreds of patient charts. I didn't do it fast enough nor consistently enough and I let the team down. They responded by kicking me off. There are many advertised shortcuts in the pre-med journey, but extracurriculars aren't meant to be efficient. They're meant to grow over years, not weeks and months. So be careful with the sexier, more exciting opportunities. They often are more likely to be fake news. Brutally honest truth number 10, don't make assumptions about people. You have no idea what they've been through. Everything is hard. Don't make it harder for other people. These were the 10 brutal truths from my 10 years since I started my pre-med journey. It's helped me and thousands of other pre-meds get into their dream medical schools. If these helped, you'll want to hear 10 more hard truths I wish I knew as a pre-med. That video is here. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.